Okay, welcome to the review of Algebra 1, Target 4.2, Simplifying with Exponents and Evaluating with Exponents. Okay, we're simplifying and evaluating exponents. This is form B. Uh, before you attempt to substitute into here, we need to simplify it. I hope you've got the list of rules in your mind. First of all, when dividing exponents, you subtract. So here we have 1 minus 3. That's x1, always a 1 if not shown, x1 minus 3. That's x negative 2. Here we have 2 minus 2, which is y to the 0. Now, with the whole numbers, there's no shortcuts. That's 2 divided by 3. It's going to be a decimal. For now, I'm just going to leave it as 2 over 3. The next step is when we have the negative exponent here, we have this rule. It flips to the other side of the fraction. Look, the negative exponent indicates that this variable should be written on the other side of a fraction line. It no longer will be negative a, it's positive a. So here, this x to the negative 2 shows up in the bottom, or the denominator. y to the 0, anything to the 0 power, is 1. So this isn't y1. 2 minus 2, our shortcut rule was 0. But anything to the 0 power is 1. So that became a 1. And we had a 2 on the top. 2 times 1. Okay, 2 times 1 is 2. At the bottom we have a 3, and now I'll substitute negative 3 for the x. Make sure you use the parentheses. Okay, negative 3 squared. That's negative 3 times negative 3. That makes 9. So I have 3 times 9 over 2. The next step, 3 times 9 is 27. And there's my final answer, 2 over 27. I would recommend you pause the video at this point and try this again on your own. Let's go over the steps, though. I simplified all the exponents. That's a x1 minus 3. 1 minus 3 is negative 2. That's 2 minus 2, which is 0. In the next step, y0 became a 1, and x to the negative 2 got written in the denominator. So we have the fraction 2 thirds, 2 thirds x squared. x I replaced with negative 3 in this step. I squared it. Negative 3 times negative 3 is 9. 9 times 3 is 27. There's my final answer. I'm going to do number 2 now. <clears throat> Here we're going to use, we have, we're multiplying exponents, so we're using this rule. x to the a times x to the b is x to the ab. So I'm going to be, sorry, x to the a plus b. That's our shortcut when multiplying as we add the exponents. So here I have y to the first and y squared. Well, 2 plus 1 is y to the third. Now let's do the x's. I have x to the fourth and x to the fourth. When I add those exponents, which is the shortcut for multiplying, I get x to the eighth. And then z, there was nothing else to add with that. There was no other z, so I just carried it over. And then 4 times, there's nothing else, 4 times 1, basically, so 4. That's the first step. Now we can substitute. So for the y, there's a 4 to the third power there. For the x, there's a negative 3 power. For the z, we're replacing it with a 2. Now, at this point, 
we have something we can type in the calculator. 4 times 4 raised to the third times negative 3. Okay, this can be a little tricky. Negative 3, make sure you have the parentheses and raise that to the eighth. And then 2 raised to the third. There's my setup. The answer in this case thirteen million four hundred thirty six thousand nine hundred and twenty eight. Again, I recommend you pause the video and try this again for yourself. Okay, here we have a negative exponent. So it needs to flip to the other side. That's this rule. Right? If it's negative exponent, it flips to the other side of the fraction. It goes from the bottom to the top. Or if it was in the top, it goes to the bottom. So this is rewritten as y1, that was already there, times another 1 with 3 on the bottom. Y1 times Y1, we're using this rule. Multiplying exponents, you add them. So that's Y squared over 3. Now we can substitute. Y was a value of 4. 4 squared is 16. 16 divided by 3 is 4. And there is your final answer. You have to be able to show all this work to get the full credit for this uh, question. Now here, we're about to use this rule. Anything to the zero power is one. So distribute zero to each of these items. You have negative two to the zero, x to the zero, y, 35 times zero is zero, z to the zero, because negative 105 times zero is zero, Everything to the zero power is equal to one. Okay, those are the hard ones. They get a little easier, I think, here. We're gonna simplify this. Here we have r squared times r cubed. Again, we're using this rule. Multiplying exponents has a shortcut of adding them, but do not try and add 3 and 4. That is a time sign. These are coefficients or whole numbers. 3 times 4 is 12. Do not write 5, 6, or 7. It's 4 times 3 is 12. R, 5. Because I did use the shortcut rule. Now, the only reason the shortcut rule works, let's do a side note. Let's be reminded what's really happening here. I had negative 3 times negative 4. Then I had r times r. That's what r squared is. And then r times r times r. That's what r cubed is. Well, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. That's five r's in a row that are being multiplied. And 3 times 4, those are both negatives. It becomes positive. That's how we got this final answer. Here we have what rule? What rule is this? Power of a power. And the shortcut is to add them. I mean multiply them. So 4 times negative 4 is negative 16. Well, we know that when we see that negative exponent, we rewrite it under a fraction or flip it to the other side of the fraction line wherever it's at. So this should be rewritten as this should be rewritten as 1 over x16. And we're done with that one. All right then, let's move on to the back side. We're still simplifying. Here's a real common mistake that people make, which is dividing these whole numbers. 
negative 2 divided by 2. That's not 0. And negative divided by a positive is a negative. You must remember that. So the first piece is that's negative 1. Now we can use our shortcut rules on the x's and the y's. The shortcut rule for dividing, again, you have to know these. For dividing exponents, we subtract those little numbers. 4 minus 2 is 2. 4 minus 4 is 0. And we're not done simplifying because we know that anything to the 0 power is 1. So this becomes a 1. 1 times anything is unchanged. So we simplify this to that final answer. Some of you incorrectly are writing this y to the 1. No, no. 4 minus 4 is 0. Anything to the 0 power is 1. Not, not that the exponent becomes 1. The value of y to the 0 is the whole number 1. Okay, here we go. Let's start simplifying. I'm going to start on the outside here for this one. z4 4 minus 4, 4 minus 4 is our shortcut, that's z0. Then we have the x's. Now this one could be a little tricky. That's negative 2 minus 4. It's the subtraction. Negative 2 minus 4 is negative 6. y4 has nothing to simplify with. And there's a 4 on the bottom, and it remains on the bottom. But this gets flipped. x to the negative a is 1 over x to the a. This gets flipped to the other side of the fraction. So our final answer, by the way, z0, that's 1. So on the very top, I have 1. This goes to the bottom, and a y4. 1 times y4 is simply y to the fourth. And on the bottom, that 4 x6. Moving on, power of a power rule here. This 2 goes to each item. So we have 2 to the second, b to the fourth, a to the second, and b to the eighth. Yes, because I'm using this rule. Power of a power, you multiply. So, 2 times 2 is 4, a to the first times 2 is 2, and b to the fourth times 2 is 8. But now I still have these to multiply. And again, the shortcut rule for multiplying exponents is to add them. We know this. So I'm adding 4 and 8, I get 12. I have b, 12. I have a squared, but how about this bit? 2 squared is 2 times 2, which is 4. There's your final answer. Okay, here we're given this formula, and they want us to plug in this for r. So, pi times 2x squared y cubed squared. This 2 goes to each item, so I have 2 squared, x to the 4th, y to the 6th. The shortcut, as we said a moment ago, for power of a power is to multiply. So I did 2 times 2, 3 times 2. That's 4, x4, x6, pi. Eliminates that. 2 squared was 4. Eliminates that. There's no 4 in it. It's one of these two. x4, x4, y6, y6. There's our answer. And finally, this problem is an a, b to the n expression. We're going down 10%. So you had 100% of your money. Subtract 10%. What is left? is 90% of your money. That's what's going to go in the B value. 
What we're going by, 90% left. A is the amount we started with. You gotta remember that's the amount you start with. Started with $65,000. So 65,000 times 0.9, that's our decimal version of 90% for five years. That's the equation I'm going to be using. So 65,000 times 0.9 for five years, yeah? Equals $38,000 left on that loan. The closest approximate value, that's a bit of a trick, approximate value is choice C. Okay, 38,381, approximately $38,500 left on that loan. Okay, try these again on your own. Good luck on the retest.